Okay. So, cool. where do you want to start? In the beginning. So, my name is Andrus Pashukonis, and I'm a postdoc here at Stanford at O'Connell Lab. Uh, my name is Daniel Shekevich. I'm a graduate student in the O'Connell Lab at Stanford. I work on spatial behavior of poisons. So we have to choose the frogs, and then it becomes a bit difficult if you don't have really many frogs. So, we can find it pretty easily. It's not a problem of finding the combination of like good areas and frogs. And it becomes a little bit trickier. Tracking to see what, um, how they round, what is the size of the home range, what are the sex differences and species differences. Then we do um, tracking experiments where we move frogs around and see how they find their way around, how they orient and navigate. Every day we were in the field, we sort of had the same routine. We got up in the morning, uh, we got our gear ready, uh, we ate, and then we left. Hopefully we came back sometimes. I think we came back most of the time um, from what I remember. Uh, but that whole middle chunk of the day there, you know, 10, 12 hours, we were out in the field, uh, you know, occasional coffee break. If Andreas led us. And there were a lot of tasks to do. Before we could actually get to working with the frogs, we had to establish our plot and set up where we were working, which required a lot of mapping. We would put down reference points and use GIS uh, mapping software so that we would have an area where we could successfully move around easily and track our frogs without having to constantly keep mapping a larger area. Where did all your orange go? Who are you? So how we track the frogs is with frog pants, which have little radio trackers on them. Like pants is a misnomer. It's becoming more and more common now in our vocabulary, but to rectify that situation. It's like we, we yeah, don't really use pants. No. We use, on Slovatica we use a G string, silicon G string pretty much is I guess the closest you know, diaper. I don't know what you call it? It's not a pant. So let's make one of these. Mm -hmm. It's a while that I haven't made one. <laughs> I'd say between 23 and 27, it's kind of yeah. our, so this, even kind of press it the wire is a little bit shapeable and then just glue the tip of it with the silicone glue I mean you get used to like after a while you you know you look at the if you've tried with enough frogs like you grab a frog and you kind of have a feeling okay this will probably fit I don't know is that a female Oh. 
And then once we've have the frogs tagged, we, we want to study how we're what we're doing our translocation homing experiments. So we move the frogs specific distances from their home territories, and then we track them as they try to get home essentially. Um, so we have a few steps during the actual translocation uh, where we take the frog from its home territory, move it to a new place, and then we want to observe it for a little bit before we start letting it travel back. Uh, so we call this task the frogger logger after the software we use. We have to set up a grid and move the frog into it and then watch it for half an hour, uh, which can be quite exciting depending on the conditions. And then af after we get to this point, right, we actually have to track the frog. Uh, this we do with these, essentially these avalanche rescue uh, devices that pick up the signal from the radio tags and we walk around and figure out where our frogs are. Cup will bring you home. That's the right direction. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Careful, careful, careful. Did you see where it jumped? Yeah. Uh, it's very possible to lose a frog and then you have to go and run around and find it. Uh, Jenny has the best refind of any of us over the entire trip. It's really? It's not the tarp? No. No, it's here. <laughs> nope, unless they walked very far just for a walk. How far did he go again? One hundred and eight meters. Wow. It's crazy. Other than track the frogs, there's a ton of other things we have to do while we're while we're in the field. So ho hormone samples are a big thing that we're going to analyze later in the lab. And it's pretty tough to do all these things when you're in the field. There's sort of crappy conditions and there's mosquitoes and things to be scared of like bullet ants and snakes. The rain is constant. The mud is heavy, very heavy. And all, through all these things, you have to maintain scientific rigor. I think that's the most challenging part of fieldwork. You have all these obstacles and you have to think like a scientist. 
um, or otherwise your work can get compromised. Yeah, itchiness. I guess, yeah, actually itchy things are the worst for me personally. Was, uh, like comparison. People talk a lot about snakes and big dangerous things, but little itchy things are way worse than, than jaguars and snakes, I think. What about insects and parasites and scary animals? I should turn these cameras to you now. Yeah, uh, sometimes you get too close to the wildlife. Uh, you, you make some friends that you maybe don't necessarily want. Um, but then you have some great bonding experiences. Yeah, it's totally trying. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I think he has one. She floats around and releases it right next to me. <laughs> okay, so that's how it feels when we catch the mosquitoes. Sucker. Yeah, I guess you won't see the close up detail, but I guess yeah. I can okay. bring it in a little bit. <laughs> Did he just like pop out? He's <laughs> 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 moving. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the closest you'll get to giving birth. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. Biologically. In addition to all this, you know, it's not just field work. There's still a lot of data processing and computer work that has to be done to make sure that we come back to the, when we come back to the lab, all of our data is in a state where we can process it and uh, we have to check everything over, make sure it's correct. Uh, so we spend some time on the computer, uh, sometimes we have some evening sessions. So I have work that we do, um, mostly work in the rainy season, in the rainforest, meaning a lot of rain. <laughs> and most of the experiments that we do, as you will know, um, require that you're out there with the frogs for long periods and you don't really adapt to the weather so you just sit there and it gets wet and it's muddy it gets itchy and it gets miserable um, but you have to, have to maintain scientific rigor while being so gloomy <laughs> not getting too distracted by Turkans and Sicilians as well that's that my kind of challenge as well. It's really amazing being in the rainforest. We see so many organisms other than just frogs. I mean, we have monkeys and tyras and other mammals and snakes and Sicilians. Are you getting scared already? Are you going backwards? <laughs> Is that your head? Yeah, sure. Is it your head? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. He's appearing under. Goodbye. Wow. And that's honestly one of the reasons why I do field work is because you, I mean, you're studying one little tiny detail, but you're kind of immersed in, in all of it. Okay, so. 
do we have fun when we're out in the field? No, I, I wouldn't call it fun. Do you have any fun in the field? Not at all. It's all sad misery. My name is Sir David Attenborough. I forgot where I put my accent tonight, so I don't have it. I am observing the wild Andreas in its natural habitat. I've been here for five minutes and he hasn't noticed me yet. Look at him, uh, contemplating all of life's questions, whether there's going to be jello or cake for dessert today. Little does he know, the power is out, so there's only canned peaches. I have a new favorite frog after finding one today. Yeah, my 42. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Oh, 75 or something like that. Mm. I mean, they are, in, they are in different levels of papers. 28, he, he was really handsome. Lab work definitely has its place in science. We would be nowhere without lab work, but field work is special. I mean, you get to see your organism uh, in a way that you just wouldn't be able to get in the lab and you understand it better. You see its behavior, you you view its, uh, how it interacts with its habitat. These are all important things to gaining a holistic understanding of, of the organism you're working with and it's special in other ways i mean you you get very close with your team or with like your family and you see things and experience things uh, that you wouldn't get other places um yeah it's sort of depressing leaving at the end but right you have to leave sometimes and uh, you get used to being back in civilization but you can always come back